Hello and welcome back to this damn Philogistic Crusade. This video will be the sale titles that I got in Indicator's most recent sale on their website, Powerhouse Indicator in the UK. Now, uh, they just recently started doing US titles, or at least announced their US distribution plan, but there's still a great many of their just absolutely sensational releases that are not available in this country and uh, will continue not to be due to licensing. So it's always wise when they have a sale to try and stock up on what you can, even though it is a little expensive due to the currency conversion and then the shipping is a bit pricey. Uh, to get free shipping, you have to pay, you know, hit a threshold of 200 pounds. So luckily I was able to get in on a group buy with some other forum members, uh, which helps significantly when you get some like-minded people together and you all chip in to the that way not have to take the full brunt yourself and your wallet hate you. So I was able to chip away at some things I needed and some things I wanted to grab before they went on a print. So first I'll go through the individual titles. I was able to get the titles from the first William Castle box set since I got the volume two and the last sale which uh, went out of print. I wanted to grab the others which are the more famous titles admittedly but Indicator did a really beautiful job on these and are actually a, a better job than what we got here in the U.S. Uh, that's especially so for the first film, which is, of course, The Tingler, which is probably the most famous of Castle's films and, of course, stars Vincent Price. Uh, this in the beautiful standard edition, so it doesn't have the wonderful booklet and obviously isn't in the original box set. But I wanted to grab this because it has the wonderful Indicator Special Features package. And what I didn't realize at first is the iconic bathroom scene. This film is in black and white, but there's a bathroom sequence, if you've never seen it, that goes into full blood red color. Uh, it's very striking and shocking the first time you see it, especially when you're a little kid. But um, they actually, uh, Indicator, did a 4K scan of an original 35 millimeter print source just for that particular scene to make sure it was properly restored in this master. So uh, currently this is the best available version of the film anywhere in the world simply for taking the time to get that sequence expressly right because it's varied on home video releases over the years and some older versions it's simply not there. I know the first time I saw the film it did not have uh, the red tinting in that sequence because I saw it on television. But again this is a beautiful indicator package. It is their standard edition but the disc contents are thankfully the same uh, so this is one of the cases like some of their hammer releases when it's the same master here uh, done by another label uh, they do a much better job at doing a archival presentation and load it with extra features next is of course 13 ghosts with uh, the iconic Illusiono presentation. So uh, you can actually view the original variants of the film where you can choose whether you want to see the ghosts or not. I know I myself, uh, the first time I saw this on television, I knew this was the one with the sort of uh, 3D glasses type effect that you needed, uh, the certain colors to be able to see the ghosts or not see the ghosts. So I remember uh, taking pieces of cardboard and like colored pink saran wrap trying to see <laughs> if I could make it work. It didn't, didn't really work because of course uh, that, that's not how you were supposed to do it but I still have great fondness of seeing this for the first time and trying to do my own sort of DIY version and apparently there is a, a manner of which uh, you can you do the ghost viewer within the actual disc presentation so this gives you the original black and white version plus the illusion o because of course every castle gimmick has to have a special name uh, the illusion o version plus the usual fantastic slate of indicator extras so this is again the way you want to see these films is the uh, superior indicator presentations even if you missed out on the box set like i did next is of course 1961's homicidal this is the film with the iconic fright break where the film literally stops for a solid minute and the clock appears on the screen for you to you know catch your breath uh, one of several films that of course castle and others made in the wake of psycho uh, of course, again, a wonderful indicator special features package, and this is the standard release version without the booklet. And then it's rounded out by 1961's Mr. Sardonicus, which when I saw this as a kid, for some reason, this was the one that got to me the most. Uh, I, th I think the other people have shared the same sentiment, but uh, it's, it's a really interesting film, like all the main castle hits are. And this, again, is the wonderful indicator presentation with a wonderful extras package and better encoding than the versions we got here in the U.S., but it is, of course, still the standard release version. So I missed out on the box set of these, and since I got volume two I knew I was going to regret it if I didn't have the other four because 
it's it's like anything that's a sort of series or a cycle of films. If you watch some, you want to watch all of them. So I, I knew before I jumped into volume two, I wanted to get the ones for the more famous titles from volume one that I missed out on. So uh, now I can do the whole main castle run on these wonderful indicator releases. I'll go through the rest of these alphabetized by a director. This first one, it's a film I'm really fond of. I have the Criterion version, but uh, when indicator came out with theirs and I knew it had a bunch of extras and things, it was included in the sales. So I thought it was a no brainer. And that way I can compare it to the Criterion, even though they apparently share the same 2K master. That's the Fritz Lang film, Ministry of Fear with really wonderful, very colorful artwork. Uh, the Criterion art is pretty nice, but I really like what they did with this. Uh, this was a pretty obscure film. I, I know it took me a long time to see it growing up. I had a VHS release here in the U.S., and that was pretty much it for the longest time. This is the standard release version, so I missed out on the limited version with the booklet, but it's still the same wonderful disc contents. And again, this is the same master Criterion was able to use a number of years ago, but it has a more substantial extras package. But if you want everything, you'll have to have both versions. Um, I guess this would technically supplant the Criterion now since it has more extras and it is the same transfer, but uh, it'll be interesting to compare the two and I've wanted to check this out ever since Indicator announced it. Next, uh, because I'm a giant fan of Sidney Lumet, uh, if there's ever an edition I haven't gotten yet, and there's still so many because he made so many great films, I had to grab some more of the Indicator releases of his titles. So this is the standard release of the 1966 uh, John le Carre spy thriller, The Deadly Affair which is pretty undervalued and pretty obscure. Unfortunately, a lot of Lumet's films are, are actually quite obscure, but this one uh, I haven't seen in a very long time, so I've been wanting to get the Indicator release to revisit it uh, with its wonderful, as typical of Indicator, special features package, and rather nice art that's very striking, but of course, it's just the standard version without the limited booklet. But still, I'm really excited to be able to revisit this film because, of course, I'm not just a Lament fan, but I'm also a spy nerd and a fan of Lucari's work. So this is one of those titles I have not seen in a very long time, and I'll love to revisit it on the Indicator release. The other Lumet title is a film I am very fond of, which is also extremely obscure and usually only gets discussed if it's ever mentioned in the most diehard of film circles or uh, film critics. And of course, I've got the, the laser disc behind me because I have this film in multiple different editions. So I had to get the Indicator release of the Anderson Tapes, the great 1971 film that once again paired Lumet with Sean Connery in what I think is one of the great actor-director partnerships that goes all the way back to uh, the 1965 masterpiece, The Hill. Uh, when Connery worked with Lumet, he was able to fully exercise his demons and get away from the James Bond films. And uh, this film is is really that personified because the one of the first images you see is Connery looking roughed up without his toupee, which he never really wears in the film, so he's mostly balding. Uh, but it's it's a very striking film. It's it's part black comedy, it's part suspense thriller, it's part caper film. Uh, but it's also a, a film full of paranoia, so it slots in perfectly to all the great 70s paranoia thrillers. Uh, it's it's a really odd mixture. I know it's not for everyone, but it's a film that I have uh, shown a number of people uh, when I try to get them to look at other Sidney Lumet films outside of the, the more famous ones. It's always a film that manages to surprise you a little bit, and it uh, definitely rewards multiple viewings. Uh, it did not have the greatest video release history. I didn't get to see it until the DVD came came out in the mid 2000s and then i tracked down the open matte laser disc and then mill creek released the sony master on blu-ray here in one of their double feature sets and it's it's a great master it's the same master that's used on this so i put off getting this for a while but of course this gives you some nice extras gives you an audio commentary from glenn kenny that i'm really excited to check out plus the super 8 cut down version and also this is in the original 185 ratio whereas uh uh, the Mill Creek disc is actually a little opened up at 178, so that's another nice bonus, plus you get wonderful original poster art. Next is a very important film in several people's careers. This was uh, very early in Joseph Mankiewicz's career, and this, of course, what he wrote and directed. It's, of course, 1946's Dragon Wick. This is the uh, standard edition reissue. I missed out on the limited version, but this still has the same wonderful original artwork that looks gorgeous. And what's also beautiful about this release, it contains not just 
the uh, HD Restoration Master that was put out on DVD by Fox a number of years ago, which is actually how I first saw the film. But it's also got the brand new 4K restoration. So Indicator has included both presentations for archival purposes because each has their pluses and minuses. And in addition to that, they have created a, a as typical of Indicator, I feel like a broken record, a wonderful and stacked uh, supplemental package, which is really important for this film because, as I said, it's important for a number of reasons. Uh, it's important in a lot of people's careers, uh, but primarily for Joseph Bankowitz and his ascendancy into becoming one of the great directors of Hollywood uh, and, of course, one of the great writer-directors. But uh, really even more important, this film is, I think, perhaps the most important in Vincent Price's career. A lot of people will point to House of Wax, which is the film that solidified him as a horror star forever, which is true. But if you want to know the film where Vincent Price became Vincent Price that we think of, the Vincent Price screen icon, uh, the first time he really played a Vincent Price type character, and I feel like I should be doing air quotes, it's this film in Dragonwick. It's a full-on gothic romance that is pretty much designed to be a gothic period setting, but it's it's coming in the wake of Rebecca's success, which spawned uh, a whole number of pictures in a similar genre, but this one takes on even more gothic trappings. It was designed as a vehicle for Gene Tierney pretty much at Fox, but as soon as Vincent shows up, it's his picture. Uh, it very quickly becomes a Vincent Price film, and you have to spend the rest of the film trying to figure out uh, what his motives are and just how duplicitous can this character be that poor Jean Tierney found, finds herself uh, stuck with. Uh, it is a, a full of beautiful brooding atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's not a perfect film. It is a little bit long, but it's an incredible film to come back to. It's made with such great uh, style, class, and intelligence that uh, you can't help but love it. And for Vincent Price, fanatics like myself it's so incredibly important again this is really the film where vincent price became the vincent price on screen i think there are flashes of it in other films before but i think every star really has that that one movie where everything comes together for their screen persona and uh just like Cary grant and the awful truth i think uh, for vincent price it's his performance in Dragonwick in this beautiful uh indicator release that i can't wait to dig into uh, because again this gives you two different restoration presentations the older uh, hd version that turned up on dvd and the new 4k restoration in addition to some wonderful extras. And then lastly, I couldn't resist this since it was on sale. Uh, this is the standard release Spine 105 of the 1949 Max Ophel's picture, The Reckless Moment, with James Mason and Joan Bennett. Uh, this is a film I saw years and years ago, and uh, as soon as I saw the cover artwork and, and re remembered Indicator had done this, I was like, okay. I'm, I'm weak. Uh, I'm adding it. So um, it's always hard during the sales because uh, you're trying to to you know be rational, but then before you know it, you're you're wanting to just shoot the works. Uh, but this, I love what they did with the artwork. It's just beautiful, and as always, it has a stacked uh, supplemental features package. Of course, it is the standard release version. More recently, there are some some of the greats like Ophuls that I, I've been meaning to sort of dig back into. So I figured this was a perfect way to dig back into his body of work. And again, it's a film that I remember really enjoying when I first saw it, and it's been years since I've seen it. So this was the perfect way to be able to revisit it. And then I'll close out with uh, with the with the best part, the two box sets that I got. Uh, these I wanted to get uh, because the first two volumes are great, and uh, I was afraid that if these were going to sell out, and I'm, I believe they're pretty close to selling out. If not, uh, they've sold out already. So that meant I had to grab uh, the third and fourth volumes of Indicator's Columbia Noir series. Here's volume three with the same bold, striking, primary color usage, and then a beautiful star shot, this of poor Bill Holden and <laughs> not the greatest moment, uh, but it's wonderfully striking with the usual indicator band. Uh, this done in the exact same amazing style as the first two volumes, which really will just bowl you over. If you've never gotten one of Indicator's limited box sets like this, I mean, the quality, the attention to detail, uh, the care and just overall love that's put into these with the massive amount of extras is just 
there's nothing else like them. There really isn't. So for me, uh, being you know obviously a cinephile on a budget, uh, you you want to you know put your money into quality releases and support great releases. But unfortunately, you can't afford to import everything. But these releases are done with such care that I I just couldn't bear it if I missed out on any of them. Like unfortunately, I did on uh, Hammer Volume One that Indicator did. So these are done in the same style as Volumes 1 and 2 and uh, some of the other indicator box sets. So the films are contained in these beautiful little digipack cases that use original poster art. The printing on them is gorgeous. And of course, they have the usual indicator block of extras on the back. They all have matching black and white disc labels, which I love. And then each has a nice profile shot. As I said on the other two, uh, and my and one of my older videos, the one thing about these, because these have the very pointed corners that stick out a little bit, you will want to be careful when you slot these in and out because you can ding up the corners a little bit. But these are all uh, obviously titles from Columbia in their noir phase. They are lesser known and lesser regarded uh, in terms of what the general public is going to know, but they're full of great star turns and performances, wonderful directors, great writers, and what's beautiful about these is you can rediscover these or discover them for the first time, because even as a noir geek uh, and a fanatic, you're obviously not going to have been able to have seen every noir. Uh, I know myself growing up, the more and more I got into noir, I would read titles, and then of course, they just didn't exist on home video, or you had to wait for the random TCM airing. Uh, it was great when TCM partnered with Sony and started to get some of these titles released on DVD in those Sony Noir box sets, but uh, those were very expensive and would go in and out of print. But um, I'm so glad I held off on some of those because these indicator box sets are amazing. Uh, and I'm also very excited uh, if they announce Volume 5, which will uh, focus entirely on Humphrey Bogart and titles he made at Columbia, uh, including uh, several Blu-ray premieres and some really important titles, plus the 4K restoration of his final film, The Harder They Fall. Uh, in fact, I was so excited about it. I wrote an article about the box set and uh, some, of the, uh, some of the film's video history in terms of releases for the uh, great Blu-ray UK website, which I will link to in the description below. So again, these are just beautiful releases. I plan on doing a full review of all of the uh, Indicator Columbia Noir boxes as soon as I can get the time. Uh, so expect one of my uh, usual uh, long video reviews on these because they they certainly deserve it. I mean, the attention to detail, the quality, uh, it does not do these justice just looking at pictures or, or looking at these in video form because they are, you have to really get one, open it up and look at it in your hands because, I mean, nobody that I'm aware of is doing box sets with this level of quality. And even with the import prices, they're they're not terribly expensive. I mean, the, the quality for, for the money you're paying, because usually on average, these break down to be, uh, depending on what supplier you use or, or what country you're in, uh, these usually are anywhere between uh, 50 and $70 US once you do the import and things. And then, of course, that's not including shipping. But, uh, you know, when you spread it out and you get them during a sale, I mean, you're really getting your money's worth. Then you get to what most people would term a booklet. But as usual, this is a full on book, uh, just as with the other two noir uh, volumes I've gone over. It is so incredibly impressive. It is well over 100 pages, has wraparound art, loaded with essays on each of the films, beautiful production stills and original artwork, and incredible vintage pieces as well, because it's not just uh, you know modern essays, which are great, but it also, uh, as Indicator tries to do, incorporates any vintage materials and interviews uh, with the great talents, unfortunately, no longer with us. So if you've never seen an Indicator book that comes in one of their box sets, you are in for a treat. These are, as I've said before, these, these could be published separately as standalones uh, you could buy them they're they're so well done it's like getting a tashin art book for in, in terms of film uh, scholarship uh, they could be published on their own and they would be great little well not little but great noir reference books so that is columbia noir volume three 
And this one is actually number 4511 out of 6,000. Again, I'm pretty sure they are very close to selling out of, of this and Volume 4, or uh, they may have sold out already. I didn't look at it and, and uh, before I started recording this today, but I knew they were, they were very close, so I wanted to go ahead and... Uh, keep going with the noir boxes uh, before I missed any of them. And of course, if you put Bill Holden on the box, I'm going to buy it. And then you obviously know me too well because volume four, they put this absolutely gorgeous still of Kim Novak on the box with this beautiful blue, bold background color. So once again, their, their art design just knocks it out of the park. And these are beautifully crafted but they still fit on a shelf they're wonderful display pieces but they don't go overboard or fill things with swag you don't need and the discs are properly packaged and protected in beautiful little cases and i've always loved that they still find a vintage hype blurb to put on the little band so again following in the same beautiful design aesthetics Again, these are just incredible. I cannot wait to dig through these. I, I wanted to get them as soon as as soon as they were announced, but of course, uh, trying to be more thoughtful with your spending <laughs> definitely helps to wait for a sale. But then, of course, you run the risk of things selling out. Um, thankfully, most indicator titles uh, they usually they're they're around for a couple months to a year or so. So it's not a a matter of having to worry that things are going to immediately sell out. But once people catch on to beautiful releases like these, uh, that's why they're they're becoming you know very um, you know selling out much more quickly. And again, I'm pretty sure that three and four are very close to selling out if they haven't already. So if you're on the fence about any of these or you were thinking about picking up any of the noir volumes, uh, just like the hammer box sets, uh, it sooner rather than later is a great idea. And I, I definitely need to um, pre-order the uh, Bogart set because I know there's a lot of people besides myself uh, really excited for that. And uh, there's a good chance that might sell more quickly. Again, just beautiful work on these. And I can't wait to dig in to these wonderful extras. And again, even on films that may be more obscure or uh, noirs that you haven't seen before, all of these are worth your time. And with presentations like this and wonderful encoding jobs and great extras packages, I mean, you really can't go wrong, even if you wind up not being a, a fan of every single noir in each volume. And currently, I don't know of a better thing for uh, film noir junkies out there. I mean, these are just... Uh, they are beyond superb in terms of their layout, construction, quality, extras, and packaging. And again, for, for the price you pay for these, it's, it's really, uh, you're, you're definitely getting your money's worth. And then once again, we come to the fully loaded book, the wonderful wraparound art. Again, these books are so amazingly done. They could be published as standalones, and you would be happy getting just a wonderful noir book. And then here is the box where you can just see Kim minus the band, and it's just, I mean, uh, that just speaks volumes right there. These are so beautiful and just incredible display pieces. So that's it for uh, what I picked up in the uh, most recent Powerhouse Indicator sale. Uh, as usual, it takes a little time to get here, and then because I did a, a group buy with some other collectors, it took a little bit longer. But uh, it's it's always fun and very helpful if, if you have enough people to get together to do one of those, uh, because it definitely does save you quite a bit on shipping, or uh, it keeps keeps you sane and keeps you from going crazy and spending 200 pounds, which is like 300 some odd dollars here uh, to get that, that free shipping threshold. But uh, when Indicator runs a sale, even though it is a bit pricey, I, I, it's definitely a significant savings, and uh, here in the U.S., you can get some of these amazing productions uh, in terms of the box sets and some of these great titles that uh, they just don't have the rights for here in the U.S., uh, and uh, their recent announcements for the U.S. Uh, exclusive releases are really enticing, so it's great to see them finally getting into the U.S. market, but they will be obviously continuing to do U.K.-only releases, so... Now it's going to be, you know, some of these U.S. exclusives, people in the U.K. and Europe are going to have to import, and then they'll fill our pain. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that's that's kind of funny that uh, uh, that 
sort of there'll be a, a smaller mirrored version of having to import the U.S. releases to Europe. But I am very so beyond pleased that they've finally gotten a foothold here in the U.S. because I really do. I really feel they're doing the best work of any boutique label um, in, in the world that I've personally experienced. I haven't obviously bought releases from every label um, because, you know, I'm not really into stuff that like Vinegar Syndrome or some of the other um, boutique labels do. But of, of the major labels, I, I am always impressed with indicator re releases every single time across the board from packaging, art design, uh, quality for for the actual cost of the disc, the encoding jobs, the masters used. Uh, I, just across the board, I'm always thrilled with every indicator title that I've, I've come across. So um, they're they're still my my personal favorite label of of all the boutique labels, and I'm just always happy when I can do a nice uh, a, a nice purchase from one of their sales. So that way I can finally chip off at all the um, wish list titles that I have of theirs. But uh, you do have to act more quickly on certain titles because they will sell out. Uh, but what I do, another thing that I love about Indicator is they will come out with the standard release version a couple months later. So if you miss out on a limited title, it will come back later and the contents will be the same in terms of the disc. Uh, you just lose the uh, the wonderful booklet and uh, the case has changed a little bit, but you don't lose any of the disc content, which is great because... Most other labels, once something's gone, it's gone. Or uh, if it's a limited edition, the standard version will come out later. It'll be like, you know, one disc instead of two or three discs. It'll lose the alternate versions and the extras and all the swag. So I love that Indicator keeps the discs the same and everything else that they can the same. Uh, but the limited editions do have that nice attractiveness and you want to get as many of those as you can. So um, I'd definitely love to hear uh, what, what you guys may have gotten in the sale or some indicator tells you're looking forward to. And uh, I'm just still drooling for that uh, Columbia Noir 5 of the Bogart titles. So I can't wait for that to arrive. So I'm, I'm going to try and do, uh, I've been going through uh, box one so far of, of the noir, noir sets, and I'm going to try and get uh, reviews up for uh, all four of the noir volumes, which are just, just wonderful. So I'm going to try and hopefully be able to do that and, and lead up to the uh, Bogart set volume five coming out because I am just beyond <laughs> excited for that as a gigantic lifelong Bogart fan. So uh, as always, I uh, hope this has been informative. I uh, hope you maybe saw some things you might want to add to your own collection later if you haven't gotten them already. Uh, again, I would love to hear what you guys maybe got in the indicator sale. And as always, thanks ever so much for watching.